next speaker is Dr. Pinson is a climate science specialist and writer with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, Albuquerque District. Her work focuses on how climate change may impact water resources in the Southwest. She is co-author of the Upper Rio Grande Impact Assessment. And I think that's the study that was done with the Bureau of Reclamation with Jesse Roach, Dagmar Llewellyn, and a couple of others. And it, it just came out in December, I believe. If you haven't seen that, that is a seminal report that uh, kind of puts numbers to the water resource impacts that we expect to see here in the middle Rio Grande. Um, she has taught geography and archaeology at UNM, CNM, and the University of Nevada, Reno. Here I am, Pinson. Thank you, Bruce. Okay. The key questions that surround, um, that are really important for understanding what the impact of climate change may be on the bosque, on the health of the Rio Grande ecosystem, and ultimately on the water that we all consume, either directly or indirectly through irrigated agriculture or industrial use. Um, the key questions are how much water and in which season will the water arrive in the Rio Grande. And so this is the Rio Grande last summer. It was down considerably. We were uh, monitoring fish, and I happened to uh, take this picture. This, the graph on the right-hand side of this shows how stream flow occurs now. And what we're seeing is that th the northern half of the Rio Grande, the Rio Chama, and um, inflow from Colorado measured at the Otoe gauge, which is above Española, peak in May, uh, and we have a pronounced spring runoff centered on May, beginning in late March and coming to a gradual decline at the end of June. We have a second trend in the lower part of the Rio Grande Basin above Elephant Butte, which is represented by the tan bars, which is the stream flow along the Puerco. And that represents uh, flashy monsoon flows primarily centered on August. And so the question kind of becomes, what is the distribution in the middle Rio Grande where we, we live? How much of the flow is going to continue to be uh, snow melt runoff from the mountains north of us? And how much, if any, can we estimate to be uh, for the monsoon. So what season of the year uh, will these, will precipitation happen and will stream flow uh, peak? Um, most of the modeling work on this was done by Jesse Roach, formerly of Sandia and now currently elsewhere. It begins with a general circulation model, which is a model of the atmosphere uh, and the oceans of the whole world. And it has a lot of inputs on how uh, society will use energy, the form of the energy, and how the natural system will respond to these economic, political, um, technological changes in the future. Um, Jesse started with 112 model runs based on, uh, I forget how many models, and 30 climate models and four or five different feature scenarios of greenhouse gases. He ran the model from 1950 to 2099. The period 1950 to 1999, I want you to keep in, in mind, that's the overlap of the historic record. That's how you know your model is not a uh, bunk, because if your model simulates the historic record relatively well, then you know your model is doing a good job with climate. Jesse did a process called downscaling to get a more local uh, model output for our region. And then he ran it through a series of other models checking along the way at every step that the model output matches the historic record in that period, 1950 to 2099. And ultimately, we get uh, stream flow in the Rio Grande and its tributaries, which was the output of this modeling effort. Was that clear? Did I lose anybody yet? Life is excellent. All right. All right. This is. Um, similar to what uh, Dave showed, uh, if we look at uh, projected temperatures, the uh, 
solid line is the model median, I believe, and you can see the range of variation going forward representing natural variation and uh, the different outcomes from the climate models. What you see quite clearly is that there is a strong upward trend in model projections of future climate. That trend is about seven degrees Fahrenheit by the time you get to the end of the century. There is an ever so slight potential with a lot of noise and a lot of variability, decline in precipitation, but it's going to be swamped uh, in terms of the natural variability. So uh, for all intents and purposes, temperature increases are going to drive future change in uh, climate in our region and its impacts on uh, stream flow. What do we anticipate to see? Well, warmer fall, warmer winter. Mm -hmm. Warmer temperatures means that more precipitation is going to fall as rain instead of snow, which means that it is not going to accumulate as a snowpack. Your snowpack gets smaller. Um, in addition, it's warmer, so there is more energy for sublimation. Sublimation is the process by which snow becomes water vapor without actually going through a melting uh, process. So it goes straight from the snowpack into the atmosphere and does not run off. The graphic on the left shows um, the outcome of this towards the end of the 21st century when our grandchildren will be grown. And what it shows is the amount of snow water equivalent in our snowpack in the upper Rio Grande above Elephant Butte. And this is the change in mean snow water. So this is the amount of water contained in the snowpack no matter how deep the snowpack is. You have dry snow, you have wet snow. This is the, the absolute value of the water. And this shows you the change. And what a lot of uh, models project is that we're going to have essentially um, declining snowpacks, that snowpack is going to gradually disappear south of the Colorado border. So many of the models project little or no snow uh, south of the Colorado border except at the highest, highest elevations of our highest peaks. Um, this is bad news for the Rio Grande, it's also bad news for the Gila. If we want to quantify what that reduction looks like for the Rio Grande Basin, uh, uh, let me back up. Um, from a warmer fall and a warmer winter, uh, models consistently project a warmer spring. This shows you the median of all 112 model runs in terms of projected stream flow at the Odoe gauge. And we said the Odoe gauge above Espanola is um, a measure of uh, how much water there is in the Rio Grande due to snowmelt in Colorado and northern New Mexico. It's also how we account for water that goes to Texas as part of our compact obligations to Texas. Um, in a nutshell, more rain, less snow, less snow accumulation in the spring, earlier runoff start, earlier runoff peak, earlier runoff end, particularly for water originating in Colorado, less so for water originating in uh, northern New Mexico. As Dave said, earlier spring plant growth, so it's getting warm enough in the spring that the plants will bud out. This makes them much more susceptible to frost. This also means that they're starting to use that soil moisture sooner. So they are drain on soil moisture at an earlier point in um, the water year. Uh, we also have increased evaporation, transpiration, which is plant water use, and increased sublimation. So the results of this is a smaller snowpack, earlier smaller spring runoff, earlier fine fuels production on trees. This is important because we have earlier and earlier starts to our fire season as a result. Um, when we put through the model what we end up with in terms of actual sort of average quantities, remember there's a lot of variation. There's going to be wet years and there are going to be dry years. So we're saying that on average, all the wet years, all the dry years, the average value by uh, the 2090s is a 29% reduction in stream flow measured at the Odoe gauge. 
percent is a lot. We also uh, receive water uh, through the San Juan Chano project on the Colorado River. Um, the Colorado headwaters are a little bit north of the Rio Grande, so there is uh, certainly water uh, may continue to be available to upper basin states in some quantity. If we're able to tap what is likely to be our full allocation, the total volume of water going through the Azotillo Tunnel will be reduced by about a quarter, so it'll be 25% less, according to the modeling. That's assuming there are no priority calls. Priority call is when somebody with a senior water right gets their water and, and you get less. So that's assuming that there are no priority calls on the Colorado River water. Is that a big reduction? Is that going to pose problems for the Bosque? Yes. It's going to have lots and lots of important uh, follow-on issues for the Bosque. It has important issues for what happens to the water table, for rates of recharge to the water table, for the demand placed on groundwater in the system. Uh, Jesse was also uh, modeled um, evapotranspiration. So this is plant water use in the growing season. And he did a whole bunch of, of different models of evapotranspiration. Um, the blue line is uh, the uh, median. The uh, gray line is the darker gray swatch um, is between the 10 and uh, 10 and 90 percent. It's the middle 80 percent of all model runs. And if you can see it, the light gray represents the range of all model runs. And what you're seeing here is because of the warming temperature, evaporative demand goes up. It goes up for our agricultural fields, and it goes up for our riparian ecosystems. It also goes up for our reservoirs where we store water, although that re relationship is a bit more complex. This number represents the demand. It doesn't represent how much gets satisfied, because of course, while this number is going up, the available water is going down, and there will be unmet demand in between those two values. This is a particularly important problem because it's going to be affecting the Rio Grande at a point where in early June we've already had an extended dry season where the spring runoff has been become significantly less and a little bit shifted to earlier in the year. So base flows in June will be lower to begin with. And it's also a period when we have enormous agricultural demands as crops are maturing in the fields. We're not entirely sure what happens. Um, I divide the, the, the sort of the calendar year into fall, winter is one season, early spring when it blows, the dry early summer, and then you get to the monsoon season. And it's not entirely clear what is going to happen with the monsoon. Part of the problem is that thunderstorm system, thunderstorms develop in the monsoon, and they're too small for models to resolve. They're really small-scale features. An individual thunderstorm that might produce a microburst over Albuquerque m is way smaller than the models can resolve. So it's very hard to look at the monsoon from a modeling perspective. Although they will certainly have uh, lots to say about this. Um, some of the things that we think may happen with the monsoon is there'll certainly be higher sea surface temperatures in the Gulf of Mexico and in the Pacific, where a lot of our summer moisture originates. There'll be higher land temperatures inland and stronger monsoonal circulation potentially. But then it's not clear after that whether that actually produces fewer bigger storms. It's not clear. Um, it's not clear what's going to happen with hurricanes in the Gulf of Mexico and in the Eastern Pacific. These are responsible for some of the really large, widespread September-type precipitation events like we had last year. And what's going to happen with them is really complex and is not uh, well understood or captured by models. I want to point out, I started working with climate change in the 
end of the, looking at the end of the ice age when all the great fantastic mega mammals went extinct. And the rate of change at the end of the ice age is fast and there's major changes to the environment and there are major, major, major extinctions. The rate of change we're talking about with climate change is far faster, far faster. Bigger in magnitude and faster, all right? The faster the temperature rises, the harder it is for humans to adapt, for ecosystems to adapt, for the river to respond in a coherent fashion. Um, the more warming, the greater the reductions in stream flow that go with it, the greater the reductions in recharge to the groundwater. Great chance that drought will become more common, variability will persist, and uh, we still will consider, we don't quite get a handle yet on how some of the important things like El Nino will change. And the last thing I want to talk about is just to point out that the fed, federal agencies and, and state agencies are out in front of this issue. Uh, for your uh, important is a Central New Mexico scenario planning project that Mr. Cog is running to look at climate change impacts to Albuquerque. Um, DOI has several initiatives in the landscape conservation cooperatives to look at conservation impacts, climate science impacts. There's a new NMSU. USDA Regional Hub is looking at impacts to agriculture. Reclamation has a number of basin studies. And the Corps of Engineers is working to look at how flood and um, watersheds will be impacted by climate change. Thank you.